Hey, what's going on, you beautiful people? My name is Tadai. I hope you guys had a pretty awesome day today. My day's been pretty awesome so far. So today for you guys, I thought we could dive back into Cinema 4D and I could bring you guys a new tutorial. Now, uh, a lot of you guys have been asking for new tutorials, especially on this low poly stuff. My last speeder that I did is the one that is actually right in front of you right now, and it got an amazing response, and a lot of you guys came to Twitter and uh, asked me to actually do a speed art, or not a speed art, a tutorial of this one due to the speed art that I made. And uh, the, my uh, my previous you know tutorials have been doing pretty well. I thought it would be a great idea to bring you guys a new tutorial on this stuff, and this is a very, very good example on how to learn a lot of things in Cinema 4D. We cover a lot of modeling, uh, depth of field, using global illumination, using just a lot of uh, lighting effects, and it is a great tutorial to learn a lot of cool stuff and to sharpen your skills in other areas as well. It's pretty simple. I'm just going to be going over the modeling aspect of it. Everything that I did in Photoshop with it, if you saw the speed art, was pretty much just changing some of the hues and saturations, but uh, yeah. Anyways, the cool thing about this is I believe all we actually use is two planes and uh, two polygons, and that's it. And it's a very, very simple thing to do. So hopefully you guys do learn a lot here. The first thing I'm going to do is go over to this cube icon in Cinema 4D and drop in a plane. Obviously, that's exactly what it's going to do. Planes right there. All I'm going to do is change the width and height to 2,000. That's just a nice round number that I like to use whenever I uh, do anything low poly. Just zoom out a bit there so I can see everything. And I'm going to change the width segments. I'm not exactly sure to what yet. I'm going to go with 80 right now and see how that looks. And for me, I think that's a proper amount of segments. You guys can mess around. Obviously, this is a tutorial that obviously you're going to learn from. But I would really like you guys to experiment as much as you can with how you like things to look. So if there's something you think feels a little bit uh, off in your opinion and you want to try something on your own sort of uh, technique, go ahead and do that. And I'd love to see your guys' results on Twitter and Facebook. So make sure to send me whatever you guys make. But uh, yeah, now that we have our plane inserted, the two things that we want to do is first, this tag right here, we got to delete that. That is the Fong tag and that will not let us have a jagged look if we have that so just click on it and press delete like I did and then we're gonna press C to make this editable uh, next what we're gonna do is actually start making some of these hills so as you see in the background we have these really tall ones and those are rather simple to do they're actually a part of the plane as well so all we really have to do there is click on this sort of surface tool here on the left side then click on this arrow here and as you can see now we can select points on the actual plane and uh, I'm just gonna right click find where it says brush which is near the top for me it might be different in different versions and then now that we have this brush selected we can just make sort of you know whatever we really need to do and of course there's special techniques that I'm gonna be doing for example in the brush selection over here I'm gonna change it from fall off from bell to constant and mode from smear to surface and exactly what that does is it just sort of makes it more chunky like that sort of like how I did the the mountains in the background I'm going to show you the technique I did for that so first of all radius can be adjusted with the square brackets on your keyboard and they can also be adjusted by bringing this meter up and down I just like to use the square brackets because that's sort of the same thing I do in Photoshop when I change the size and the strength what we're going to do is bring that down to a about 75 for what we're doing right now and then we're going to bring it down even lower uh, for the next step so all I'm really going to do here is near the back corners because the back corners are going to be the the mountains in the background I'm just going to start by clicking and dragging up and making a little selection like that shrinking my brush doing the same thing over again and just making it taller and taller until we get a nice sort of mountainy look and of course they don't have to be perfect because they are going to be in the background and they are blurred due to the depth of field there so we're just going to do that over and over again obviously you can make some taller some different some shorter but it is a very simple technique i like to do it in three so one two three uh, of course you can do it in more if you want for example i can do four and of course it makes it look more gradual when you do it this way i just think three gives it a much better sort of low poly like it, it's it's meant to look like a low resolution and then of course just go around the bottom and, and just even though this part might not be seen depending on how you set up your scene I think it's just nice to make sure it, it's not too straight and too flat on the plane at the bottom so just just go over it a bit and uh, add a few bumps here and there and then of course what I like to do is bring the strength down and then just go over the whole thing uh, probably not one percent that's way too low let's go over the whole thing and make it a little bit more bumpy everywhere just so it's more organic and more natural and then if you want to even bring it negative and uh, bring it down as well just so it's something a little bit uh, 
a little bit more natural, something that you'd see in nature, because this is supposed to be like a glacier scene, and of course it's not going to be perfectly straight, nothing's perfect in nature, and uh, that's sort of the look we're going for. And as you can see, it sort of drags back, but from the angle we're going for, it is perfectly fine. Next, what we're going to do is sort of the, the mountains in the front here, as you can tell, that they're very, they're very, very different than everything else because they're what pops out. They're the, the main glacier that we're looking at. And there's a few steps to this. Uh, the first one, what we're going to do is bring the strength up to something like, I would like to say 65. Let me just test that. Yeah, that's about right. And what we're going to do is just really just get at it here right in the middle. So we're just going to bring it up as much as we can. And it's just going to be really random. That's what we're going for here. Actually, 65 might be a little too small. Perhaps I'm going to bring it up to about 80%. 80% sounds about about right, and we're just going to do that exact same thing. Just bring it up, really just sort of click and drag and make it crazy. Not too crazy because it's going to affect something that we're going to do later on, but uh, just really just you know make these peaks very noticeable and uh, just sort of drag them out. So then when we move our camera sort of to the angle, that the other scene is in you can tell this already kind of looks like uh the scene that i was showing you earlier so now that that's like that i'm just going to place a camera here by putting the camera to or clicking the uh, little camera icon right there and we're not in the camera right now because uh you know we're still editing everything around and uh that's just something that we're going to leave there for a while until we start adding in the water and whatnot but uh one more thing i want to do is just really really um in the brush tool bring the strength really high up and just really peak these mountains just so they really really look like they are mountains themselves and not just sort of structures that happen to get taller and taller uh, just make it look like it would in nature obviously you can go over anything you want whatever you feel looks best and uh, make these peaks even adjust the uh, scaling in the mountains whatever you think works with your situation like I said I want you to make it the way you want to make it if there's anything you want to change do that because obviously tutorials can help a lot but if you're copying exactly what the person's doing you're not really learning anything and uh, I think that you guys should really mess around and make the best thing that you can what I'm gonna do now is because of what we're gonna be doing next is I'm gonna be making a texture for this scene and obviously since it's snow what I'm gonna be doing is just making it a very um, the mountains are going to be sort of a medium gray and i'm going to kill the specular that's all we really have to do with low poly it's really simple and just drag that on and uh, that kind of looks like mountains sort of like glaciers and it's not bad now the next step that we're going to do is probably the longest and most boring and just blah no one really wants to do it but it makes a very nice effect step and that is adding this sort of this sort of um, bevel and bump and make it look like there's actually snow on top of these mountains and how we're going to do that is like I said through a bevel technique and what I like to do is make sure surface is selected and use this arrow tool and uh, just select pretty much everything that you want to have that sort of look to it so you just sort of click and slide over obviously if you let go of click and then click somewhere else it's going to get rid of your previous selection but if you hold shift after you click you can continue on you can try and do this in one click if you want but uh I recommend moving moving around and if you go over you can press control over what you clicked and that will undo it for you as you can see there got a few things that I didn't want to do so just control click over top of that and they are gone and a holding shift like I said just go over everything that you need to go over and uh, once we're done this which this part really shouldn't take too long the selection it's the next step that's going to take a little bit more time and like i said it is the most boring and tedious part of this whole thing but hey it has to be done and adds a really nice effect once it is finished so just make sure you've gone over everything you wanted to you know find the angles go over everything again and a holding shift you should be able to um continue on your little yellow selection so i'm just making sure i'm getting everything i need uh, you can pretty much eyeball it, go into where your camera is. If it looks good from there, it should be good. I'm just going to get over here. And uh, essentially what you do now is now that this is selected, and of course, make sure you get rid of everything you don't want selected like I have back here. Don't really need that. Uh, it's just going to make it look a little bit weird when you're done. So I'm just deselecting everything I don't need. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to right click, press bevel, and just sort of click and drag to the side. And what this does is oh wait sorry <laughs> wait where is it where is it yeah it should be bevel click and just drag to the side a little bit and as you can see what this does is it adds sort of like a a a surrounding layer to it and of course some things aren't going to like it too much but we can work around that so i'm just going to drag it out a little bit 
And what makes this annoying is that once there's a bevel to it, what we actually have to do is click around everything. So we're going to control, not control, we're going to hold shift and click around all these edges that we have just recently made. And it is a pain. It is going to take a while. Of course, there's always going to be things that aren't that fun when you're doing uh, modeling like this. But I mean, it, it makes a really nice effect. I really like the way that it turns out. And uh, it's something that has to be done. So we're just going to go all over all of it. Just make sure that you get everything, or at least everything you can see in the camera. That's one cool step that you can do, is uh, you can actually just zoom out of uh, where you were. Make sure you get back into that camera view. And just click everything that you uh, personally think needs to be done within your scene. And of course, you're going to be adjusting the camera at some points. And because of that, make sure that you are actually getting everything that you think will be seen within the shot. We're also going to be adding water later on after this step, actually. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to cover up some of the mistakes that we've made with this. Because, of course, you know, it is going to take a while. It's not going to be perfect. And uh, being able to cover it up is something that's very, very nice especially when there's so many different steps involved and so many different things that you have to click on. And it's just a very tedious task. I'm just going to get nice, close, and personal here because I know that this is something that is going to be in my camera view, but I also don't really want to do it from far away. So shift clicking, of course. And it, like I said, there's really not much you can do about this. And of course, I'm repeating myself because there really isn't much I can talk about here. Uh, I have done a few tutorials before, and one of the main reasons I've been holding off of tutorials, I guess I can talk about that right now, is because I'm planning on making my own graphic website, and one of the things that I want to have as a product is actually a series of low-poly tutorials, so I've kind of been holding off on this kind of stuff because of that, and uh, I guess this is a nice little treat, and hopefully you guys don't mind too much that I'm doing that, but um, it should be coming out soon, and hopefully in March break I can get a lot of work done on that. But uh, this should be good for now. I'm just going to zoom back into my camera view. And now what we're going to do is make a second texture. What we're going to do now is just make this pretty white, kind of like snow. Not completely white. I think that never looks too good. Just a little bit more dull than white. And, of course, make sure there's no specular. Slap that on there. Click off. And there you go. You kind of have your snowy looking scene. And I'm just going to move the camera around a little bit to kind of uh, accommodate for everything that's happening here. And I'm kind of happy with how that's looking right there. Next thing that we're going to do is add our second plane in, which is going to be our water plane. And because there's still little planes, I'm not even going to bother titling these ones. We're going to do the same steps as before. Delete the fong tag and make it editable by pressing C on the keyboard. And with this, what we're going to do... Actually, no. Sorry. Before we do that, we're going to have to change the size to 2000 because that's what it is before. And make the segments... I think we had it 80 before, so I'm going to make this 75. Now we can make it editable by hitting C on the keyboard. What I'm going to do is click this full object so I can just drag it up a bit. And we're going to have it right about here, I think. We'll obviously mess around with it once we add our effectors and whatnot. But um, this is the main sort of area I kind of want to have the, the water in. So what I'm going to do here is do a few things. The first thing that I'm going to do is go to MoGraph, Effector, and where is it? Where is it? Random. Now we're going to drag the random effector into the plane that we just made into our water. And we're going to go to the deformer tab, off, and change that to polygon. As you can see, that immediately adds some weird things going on there. Um, I'm just going to drag these all down to around, let's start with 20 and see how that goes. Maybe even a bit lower. Just, just you know, mix and match until you find what you like. I just want it to be a little bit disturbed. Next thing that we're going to do is go to this sort of purple half pipe thing and uh <laughs> we're gonna insert a displacer do the same thing put it into the plane with this displacer we're gonna go to shader click the little arrow and go to noise go back to object mess around with the height and one last thing that we're gonna do is go back to the little half pipe polygon reduction and drop that at the very bottom it's key that you have it at the very bottom as you can see it really drops the polygon amount so we're gonna change that to around 18%. I like polygon reduction because it makes everything into triangles rather than squares. And I think that looks better when it comes to water. So zooming back in. Oh, I really need to adjust this camera. That's not good. Zooming back in, you can see it really has a nice sort of watery look to it. I think it's cool. And of course, we have to add a texture to it. Now, one of the things I also want to do is clicking on the plane, clicking on this little arrow, and clicking on the surface tool. As you can see, it went back to normal. That's just because we're editing the actual surface. What I want to do is um, do a quick little change to the way that it's interacting with the mountains. So we're going to open up our brush again by right-clicking and pressing, uh, not bridge, brush. 
There we go. And I just want to bring the strength down a little bit, probably to about 20%. And uh, with this, all I really want to do is just make sure that the water is kind of brushed up against the uh, the glacier itself, just so it sort of looks like there's water rushing against it. And uh, I think that gives it a nice little look. It doesn't really have to be anything too crazy. That's just the look we're going for now. And just bringing it all around everywhere. And that should be good. Now, like I said, what we're going to do is add a texture to this water. Texture for water is pretty simple. And uh, the one cool thing about this is you can actually use something that you learned in science class, um, which isn't really that cool at all. We're going <laughs> to we're gonna turn on transparency and where it says refraction, we're going to change it from 1 to 1 1.33. Th Ugh. Getting a little tongue-tied there, which is the refraction rate of water. You should have learned that in grade 10 science, I believe so. I don't know. Anyways, we're going to go back into the color tab and uh, adjust it to whatever watercolor you think looks good. Obviously, just make it realistic unless you want some weird picture. Because like I said, do whatever you want, right? If it's not right for you, don't do it. Um, go back to the transparency tab. Transparency tab. I am not able to speak today. <laughs> and just change the brightness and make sure it's something that looks kind of like water. I'm going to start with 70% and see how that goes. And then, of course, hit reflection because water reflects what's around it. And I'm going to leave it at 35%, see how that goes. Drop that in. And uh, obviously, now we can just adjust where the water is and just see whatever looks good for us. If you want it here, that's cool. If you want it lower, I think I'm going to bring it right around there, but then go back to my plane and uh, go back into my brush tool and drop this there because I simply just don't want it there. Uh, how do I? Okay, just had to deselect that. Okay, so bringing the brush, I'm just going to make it negative and get this out of here because I want the water to be, you know, the only thing sticking out. And uh, we do have a water scene. We do have sort of mountains with ice over it. We have mountains in the background. And now what we're going to do is add in a atmosphere. We're going to do that by clicking on this symbol right here. I don't really know how to describe it. It says floor. Uh, it should look like a floor right beside the little half pipe. And we're going to drop in a physical sky. And obviously that makes a lot of differences. Um, it adds a, a pretty much a realistic sky and of course you can go into the settings go to time and location mess around with uh, whatever time you want your um scene to actually be in i'm gonna go with a 12 o'clock just smack in the middle of the day of course uh one of the things i want to actually do as well is show you the render settings so we're going to edit render settings and when i do my lighting i like to do this all at the same time so that's why i'm doing this uh width i'm going to change to 1920 and height i'm going to go to 1080 so we have that full 1080 effect um save we're going to change this to a png and we don't want an alpha channel if unless you actually don't want there to be a sky in the background personally i do i'm just gonna make it um not an alpha channel and what else do we need to do here we do need to add effects so we're going to the effect tab and we're going to add ambient inclusion bring that contrast up to about 15 percent we're also going to uh, add in a global illumination. Really don't do anything there. And the one cool thing that I've just recently learned and uh, really want to show you guys is depth of field. We're going to add one of those in. Go to lens. Change the lens sharpness to about 10. That's what I like to do. And then we're going to close out. And the one thing we're going to do before we see our first render is uh, actually I'm going to zoom out of the camera so I can actually show you this. In the camera settings, we're going to do some pretty cool stuff. So click on your camera. Go to where is it? I just need to make sure I know where it is. I believe it's object. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not object. Physical detail. Yeah, details. And it says DOF map front blur and DOF map rear blur. We're going to check both of those. And as you can see, it is very hard to tell. But in the camera, there's a little box right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the end. So it sort of moves where the uh, the box is. And we want the box to show exactly what we want to be in focus because everything else will be slightly blurred. So I'm just going to make sure that this box is set up so that it's right on the mountains, right on the focal point. Check back in the camera and we're going to give this a quick render to see what we have. So obviously with any first render, there's going to be things that you don't like. Uh, obviously here the water I think is not transparent enough and the focus is in the wrong spot. Plus the sort of spike sticking out isn't looking too good for me. So the first thing I'm going to do is angle the camera a little bit more down so we have more focus on the front here. Uh, I'm going to zoom out of the camera to make sure that I kind of get the desired look I'm looking for here. Um, we're going to change this end square to never mind we're not going to affect the end square we're going to change the front square 
to be a little bit more centered on what we're looking for here and I bring that back as well so we're just going to adjust the um, depth of field settings to make sure it's on exactly where we want it to be what else we're going to do is I'm going to go into plane and I'm going to be editing a point here right where this little thing's sticking out because I'm not liking it too much I'm going to click on the point selection tool click on make sure I get this very accurately click on this point wait 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 click on the exact point that I want and just oh sorry I'm in the brush tool what am I doing I need to make sure I'm on the little arrow tool click that and then just bring it down and just sort of calm it down because that was really really out of control just sticking out there and I just mess with it whatever you want to do you know it's your picture right also like I said in the water setting I'm going to want to change the transparency to be a little bit more so I'm going to move that to about 80% and one last thing that I want to do before we try another render out is actually add in another light. So what I'm going to be doing here is clicking. That is kind of funny down there. <laughs> what I'm going to be doing is uh, clicking on this light, adding in a spotlight. And with the spotlight, I am actually going to be dragging it out to the side here. I want to turn off the physical sky just so it's a little bit easier to see this. But um, I'm just going to want to be aiming this exactly onto the front mountains that we're focusing on. So just bringing it up, backing it out a bit, and uh, rotating it to make sure it's where I want it to be. And of course, there really isn't many tips I can give for this. It's just put it where you need to put it and um, just mess around until you get exactly what you want. So that seems pretty close to what I want right there. I'm also going to be going into this and changing the color from sort of a just pure white to a, a whitish blue. Nothing too intense because it will change a lot. Just so I sort of get that, that tinted look. I'm going to turn back on my physical sky and I'm also going to change my physical sky settings to be a little bit later in the day. I'm going to change it to 14. I'm going to give this a render and I'll see you guys once this is finished rendering. All right, so we rendered it out again and of course everything's looking better. The blur is still focused on the actual mountains that we don't want to be blurred. So we just need to do a quick fix on that. And by doing that, I'm actually just going to go into the camera settings, click that, go into the details. And just make sure that I have this positioned in the correct place. So I'm going to zoom that way out and uh, zoom this back. It's the start and the end settings here that you want to mess with. So the start, I'm going to put it on zero because that's what it is by default. And the end, like I said, just mess with it until you see that frame is right where you want it to be. So I'm going to go back to the camera, give a quick render, and I will see how it looks once it's done. All right, so there we have the correct blur. I'm not going to lie, guys. I totally forgot to tell you something here. Um, what we need to do is when we're actually adding in our depth of field, we have to make sure under basic, we make sure all of these boxes are checked. And that's what's going to blur both the background and the front of the water. So the only difference between what we have right now and this image here, other than stuff that we did in Photoshop, is just these two polygons right there. And the only thing that I really did for those was I went to the square, inserted a uh plat platonic platonic whatever whatever that's called i guess i've never really bothered to try and read that so hopefully that was right because that's pretty embarrassing if i got that wrong anyways we're going to slap on our snow texture drag that to a position where it's kind of out of the way not really in the center and uh, just sort of put it half in the water i'm just going to duplicate it so that we have two and it really just you know makes it so there's there's just more than one there bring it up in size rotate it a little bit drop it in the water and uh, just just kind of get them out of the way a little bit maybe even a bit off screen and now that those are there we can render it out and we'll see what our final product looks like so of course for our render settings we have that 1920 by 1080 save what we have to do is I uh, click these dots and put them where we'd like to put it I'm just gonna put it on the desktop as test um png we already established that alpha channel only if you'd like it to be an alpha channel everything else you can just leave uh one thing i'm going to quickly do though is change the physical sky to an hour later so it's a little bit darker and then we're going to hit this middle render button 
And what that's going to do, of course, if you've never used Cinema 4D, is going to render the image to wherever you actually saved it to. Now, of course, this picture now looks pretty much the exact same as this one here. And the only key differences between this image and the one we're rendering right now is just some stuff we did in Photoshop. As you can see, the siding's a bit darker and the color's adjusted and there's a few splatter effects. If you do want to see how to do that, I can direct you to my other tutorial. I will put a link in the description and on screen right now if you are interested in finding that. But anyways, that's that's all we really have now for the modeling aspect of this tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed and hopefully you guys learned something. I would love to see your guys' creations and your design and your finished products sent to me on Twitter and Facebook. Last time we did a set of tutorials, you guys were very, very good with that and I loved seeing all your finished stuff. I actually had someone just send me something today and I was really happy to see his work. I mean, it is really cool, especially since I really like to emphasize that you guys should not just be copying what I'm doing, but learning and applying it. So I want to see what you guys can make make maybe you could mix something with uh with this lesson plus the other lesson that told you add some trees in there add some modeling some clouds whatever you'd like to do i didn't add clouds into this because if you watched my speed art i personally didn't really find a way to to increment them into the proper sort of environment i didn't think this thing really needed any clouds especially since i made it so sunny so uh, it's just rendering out now and i just kind of want to show you guys what the finished product looked like with the depth of field with the lighting with the atmosphere with the beveled snow and all that cool stuff because I think this is a very important project for those of you guys who are learning Cinema 40, not only to just sort of understand low poly, but understand the basics of modeling as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, of course, you can hit that like button and comment down below, subscribe if you're new, all that good stuff. But I uh, thank you guys so much for supporting this. I've been getting so much love in my in my design aspect of YouTube because as you guys know, I am a gamer. I do a lot of gaming videos and that's what I grew up with this channel. And uh, just for me to start doing some of this stuff and getting such a nice response is a cool feeling. So thank you guys so much for being so supportive of the stuff that I'm doing here on this channel. And I'm having a ton of fun. So, of course, this is pretty much done. As you can see, it's turning out pretty nice. And uh, like I said, I would love to see your creations. Would love to see how this turned out for you guys. I would love to do some more tutorials in the future, like I said. So let me guys know if there's anything specific you'd like to learn. But this is just finishing up right now, and let's take a look at what we have made. So anyways, this is the final image that we have here. Everything looks great. The beveled snow, the blur looks amazing, the mountains in the background, the atmosphere. So hopefully you guys learned something. I would love to see some likes, some comments, and some subscriptions from this video. Thank you guys so much. If there's any specific tutorials you'd like to see, make sure to let me know. But once again, guys, my name's been Tie-Dye. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.